Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. We today are going to be playing Vintage Cube and we are starting off with a very, very interesting pack. So there are a lot of really strong cards here. Thoughtseize and Reanimate are both really strong black cards. I think Thoughtseize is just just a little bit better than Reanimate as it's just so incredibly efficient. Uh, we've also got Underworld Breach here if we want to be storming. Also Life Death is another reanimation spell, but I think the correct pick here is Mana Vault. Mana Vault is pretty easily in the top 20 cards in the cube, including power. Easily the top 10 non-power cards. It's it's just such an absurd accelerant, and uh, it being colorless leaves us open. And then maybe we can try to wheel Trinket Mage out of this pack to go with Mana Vault, or Cryptic Goat, or maybe we can uh, wield a Breach and Cook. Um, a little hesitant to go into Reanimator, but I don't really want to try to wheel this life set because we are passing Thoughtseize and Reanimate, so... Presumably downstream, people are going to be in black. But uh, very happy starting with a Mana Vault, one of the best non-power cards to start on for sure. Okay, let's see what we're following it up with. Hmm. Well, this pack is a lot worse. So, uh, what stands out to me is, I guess, Channel and Hollowed Fountain. Channel is, uh, can lead to some really busted starts, but it is double green. Uh, and being in green is a lot worse uh, in Vintage Cube than the other colors. I think it's a lot weaker, so that's one of the main downsides to channels. You do need to be heavy green for it. Um, Hollowed Fountain is just a solid land. I'd be a little bit more interested if it was a Tundra, but I think I think it's worth starting on channel. Plus, we already have Mana Vault, so we can try to do busted things, maybe. I think starting on the channel isn't the worst. We could just pick up some Eldrazi and try to cook. All right, and what's next here? So there's the Coast like to go with Channel, but taking it so early is very aggressive. Uh, Path to Exile and Smuggler's Copter are really strong. Uh, and then we've got um, Echo Beans and Dream Halls as combo cards. Oh, I'm kind of tempted to take the Dream Halls, I'm not going to lie. It's probably not the optimal pick, but it's very fun. Um... I think I might just do that. I mean, I think there's the the optimal pick is probably Smuggler's Copter because it's colorless and very strong. Um, but I think we're just gonna go ahead and take Dream Halls. We already have Mana Vault to accelerate it out. Um, it's not super synergistic with Channel because Channel wants you to cast colorless spells. Dream Halls wants you to cast the multicolor stuff. But they go both are like sort of combo style cards. Um. Oh, okay. I think now we're going to just completely ignore this Pragmatic Vista and take this Brain Freeze. And we're going to try, we're going to really hope that the Underworld Breach wheels, which that pack is really strong. So it's not impossible. Definitely, definitely not guaranteed, but like, there's a chance. There's definitely a chance. And even without Underworld Breach, Brain Freeze is still very interesting with the Dream Halls. There's definitely an argument to Pragmatic Vista. Fetch ones are really strong. Uh, but I think I want to just take Brain Freeze here and try to, try to go off. And, um, I don't know, maybe we can wheel a World Spine Worm if we find a Flash, or like an Aether Spellbomb would be fine. I don't think Top is very likely to wheel. Uh, right, let's see what's next here. Oh, okay, so we've got, we've got a Portal to Frexia to go with this channel, but we also have a Mystical Tutor, and I think Mystical Tutor is going to be, um, potentially pretty important for this deck. Uh, right now, it can find Channel and Brain Freeze, but uh, these kind of blue combo decks do tend to uh, really want Tutors. Uh, it doesn't find Dream Halls, but that's fine. Um, rest of this pack isn't super relevant. Like, there's random dual lands, maybe. Like, a Charter Course would be fine, but I think I want to take Mystical Tutor here. I don't know, taking, taking the... With specifically Channel, basically all of the colorless um, payoffs are good, um, with Emrakul being obviously, like, the best, but they're um, all somewhat replaceable because they all kind of just do the same thing in the game. Um, okay, so this pack pack isn't amazing. There's a treachery here, which is okay. Outland Liberator, Garouk. Grist is a good card. Headliner Scarlet's also really strong, but we're not looking like a Headliner Scarlet deck. And Adeline. Does seem like Agro's kind of open. Um, I think I want to just, uh, take Treachery. 
in case we pick up Brain Freeze, it's also good with Dream Halls to some extent. Um, I think I'm fine with Treachery here. Also, an argument to Shadow Spear if we pick up Saga, but I think we just speculate on the Treachery. Treachery uh, used to be a lot stronger. Now it's kind of a a lot more marginal, but still still a fine card, especially if you have Brain Freeze. Um, here, so there's there's Metamorphose and there's uh, Mishra's Research Desk because cards that stand out to me. I think I want to take the Metamorphose just because it's going to be a very helpful if you want to play this channel, both if we want to try to splash it because it's fixing, and you can channel and then turn one color, one source of color mana into two. So maybe you can channel some uh, more colorful spells out early. Uh, I think that's a little better than Mishra's Research Desk. Uh, Okay, so there's a cool ultimatum here for this Dream Halls. Uh, there's also a Mox Opal. That's a very late Mox Opal. To be honest, cool ultimatum. I'm not super high on cool ultimatum. Like, it's okay. But it's basically only good with Dream Halls, and I'm not even sure we're Dream Halls in yet. Whereas Mox Opal, we already have this Mana Vault. And a Mox Opal this late means the artifacts are pretty open, so I think I want to just take Mox Opal. Uh, okay, didn't we have a Breach, unfortunately, but we're just going to take a Cryptic Coat. That's fine. It's possible that we don't end up uh, doing Dream Hall stuff uh, and maybe go more into Artifacts. We definitely have inroads to a lot of good things here. Yeah, Breach. Breach, I think, isn't that surprising, but it is unfortunate. Uh, okay, and here... We could just take Tamiyo. Tamiyo is good with like Displacer Kid, and if we pick up like a Time Walk, um, there's this Cauldra, I guess. I guess we pick up Tinker, but nothing else really stands out to me. Uh, so I think I'm fine taking Tamiyo. Uh, okay, now we got a Cosleck. That's good. That, that'll help with the channel. It, it does seem at this point like we are just going to be channeling um, Late Path to Exile uh, and Late Questing because Green does look open. Uh, but uh, having having at least one fatty for now is good. Now I'm just going to take a uh, speculative Torsten since it's good with Dream Halls and Treachery. Or Dream Halls and um, in case you pick like a Flash or something. Not not Treachery, but um, I guess we'll just grab a Bloom the Marsh. There's a world where we splash black and uh, I guess we'll pick up a random Guru. Why not? Uh, Goy, probably not going to see play, but I'll keep it in for now. It is a good blocker against Aggro at the very least. Um. I don't know what are we hoping for here? Obviously, power. I mean, we're, we're we have a very good setup for time walk here, since we're already looking for wheels. We already have Tamio and some planeswalkers. Um, we do need some fixing. Uh, wheels in general are really good because we have dream halls, like a fast bond. Okay, so it's not a wheel, but it is another payoff. I think I'm gonna snap off this whole breacher, and I'm pretty happy. Hellbreaker is really strong, even without wheels. It's still a very solid card. But once you once you can. Uh, put some wheels in your deck, Cobra goes nuts, because it's basically just Splinter Twin with the wheel. Um, already passed on Echo of Eons, but still got um, Time Twister and Time Spiral and all of these. There's there's a number of wheels in the cube, so definitely very happy to be taking it here. Uh, hopefully we can wheel this Hedge Maze uh, with Consider Thieving Scout over my stone also being reasonable. Also maybe Sylvan Library could be a thing. Um, but yeah, pretty happy taking Hellbreacher. What's next here? Um, so, yeah, still, still kind of figuring out our direction here. Um, it at the moment it looks like Mox Opal is probably not going to get there, uh, but that could definitely change. You know, maybe we could see like an Artist or an Academy and just start forcing. Do we have one, two, three cheap artifacts? Uh, so it's not impossible. Uh, it could also end up being more of like a green ramp deck, I guess. We do have this Garouk and maybe this Goyf. Ooh, oh. Oh, wow. Um, well, this pack is really something. So, there's there's three really nuts cards that stand out to me. Mana Drain, Pessim Station, and Urza Saga. I think of these three, Pessim Station is the weakest, probably. Um, I think Mana Drain is generally better than Urza Saga, but we have we have a Mana Vault, which makes Urza Saga really, really strong. Because it can turn Urza Saga into a land that just taps for four. Like, you just you tap for mana, get mana vault, and you just have an incredible amount of mana. And there's also, like, Lotus Petal, Kinnon, the Healy. A lot of um, solid cards that you get on the wheel here. 
I want to take Urza Saga. I really do. Like, it's just... It's so absurd with Mana Vault. I also have a Mox Opal. Definitely looking to pick up more artifacts. Energine is such an unbelievable card, though. And if we're channeling, then we're going to have usage for the Colorless Mana. I think I want to take Urza Saga. I think I just want to take Urza Saga. I don't know. That's really close, though. I could definitely be persuaded to go either way. Ooh, this pack is nice. So we're going to pick up a Flood of Strand here. Um, maybe wield this talisman. Double on color talisman is nice. Next up coming could be solid as well. Two fetch lines here, but we're definitely gonna take the flooded strand. Oh, uh, there's also upheaval, which could be interesting if you can pick a fast bond or some more fast mana. This fast bond channel is or um upheaval channel is maybe could be a thing. Uh but yeah, uh flooded strand is great. Uh okay, and now we have to pick between counter spell and force negation. I don't think we want to be taking Relic of Sauron, Pentad Prism, uh, Uro, any of these cards. We could definitely pick up one of the artifacts on the wheel. Um, Thundering Falls, we don't really have a reason to take. I think Counterspell is a little better, and we are not necessarily going to have the most blue cards. I would snap off a of Force of Will here, but Force Negation is quite a lot worse. Um, so yeah, pretty happy taking Counterspell. Counterspells are really strong, and Counterspell is no exception. Uh, okay, so now what do we have? Um, I think Coda Jewel, Jace, and Hex Drinker are the three cards that stand out to me. Um, there's no sideboard for now, along with the Armagoyf, I think. Um, yeah, I, I kind of want to take Jace, just because we already have Manamorphose, Mystical, Brain Freeze. Jace is pretty good. Um, Hex Drinker is kind of cute with all the colorless mana we're making, but it doesn't look like we're necessarily going to be like a green aggressive deck. Uh, Coda Jewel is good, but we don't have a Displacer Kitten or anything. It's mostly just Channel at the moment, which isn't quite enough. And it's a lot more likely to wield than JVP. And also, we could get the Odawara or the Haywire Might on the wheel, I wouldn't mind. I think uh, a Jace here. This is good. Um, okay, following it up here. Don't want to take Blightsteel. It is one of the worst cards to channel out out of the really expensive colorless cards. Um, I think it's probably between Brainstorm and Git Probe. And I kind of want to take Git Probe. We only have one fetch for this Brainstorm, and Git Probe being free Storm Count is uh, pretty relevant for Brain Freeze. I think I'm pretty happy taking Git Probe. Um, it is a solid card. Uh, okay, and now... Ooh, okay, we have to pick between Miscalc and Botanical Sanctum. Miscalc is good, but um, we're looking like a somewhat of a more non-interactive deck, and... Uh, channel does put a strain on our mana base. How crazy is it? Because Midgok is very strong. Like, um, I also have Mishra's Bauble, but yeah, um, I don't know. We're probably not going to wield a botanical sector. It's probably like a Sank Peering or like a Rampaging Raptor last pick or a Torok or something. I think, I think our mana is going to be kind of rough. I, I do want to just take this botanical sanctum. We already have a counter spell. I don't know. I, maybe that's wrong. Okay, hmm, not in love with this pack. So there's a Rafellos, but we're definitely not doing that. It's probably Soul Guide Lantern over Endurance because we have the Urza Saga. And we could pick up more uh, Artifact Synergy. I think that's fine. Uh, okay, so, huh. We will the Skydiver, I suppose. Um, could also take the Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library, when you've already got um, stuff like Channel. We do have some shuffles with the mystical as well. Yeah, I'm actually kind of into take Sylvan Library. I don't know, Thieving Skydiver is pretty good, but this is not the best Thieving Skydiver deck. I like Sylvan. Ooh, Cryptic. Um, we are definitely heavy blue enough for Cryptic to work. Uh, Kinnon, we don't have Basalt, so I'm not as excited to take Kinnon, even though we do already have like a Kozilek and we're looking for more of that kind of thing. I think Cryptic's just very strong. We can just take it here. Uh, okay, now we wield a Talisman. I, I think I prefer Talisman to Nexus. It's weird, because it's like not amazing to ramp into and not amazing to channel into. I don't have a Tinker. Double on color Talisman is pretty good. Um, I think I want to take the Talisman. And I think Dream Halls and Torsten... I guess we'll just relegate them to the... Uh, relevant to keep in mind of. But, um, probably not getting there. Uh, we haven't seen many wheels so far for the stream halls. Uh, oh, Oath of Druids. Can we go? 
No, I guess really I have Hold Reacher. Hmm. Though, you know what? Arrow is good, though. But, actually, yeah, I'm kind of into take Oath, honestly. Um, because we're looking for more fatties. And, uh, we can maybe just play Hold Reacher with the Oath if it's good enough. Otherwise, it's only like this JVP that we can relegate to the maybe board. This could actually be a thing. That's that's very interesting. Didn't really note it um, initially, but actually on the wheel, it, it is looking a lot more viable. So now we're just mainly looking for Eldrazi. I mean, Emrakul is obviously the best, but um, yeah, hmm. and more just like big creatures. Yeah, oh, I don't know. It's it's a speculative pick, but it, it could come up. Um, hey, why am I? Uh, I guess we'll take care of my, uh, if we play the Oath, then we probably won't play it. I guess we'll just, uh, Leobold could be, maybe if we pick up some black fixing. Yeah, that's an Unpaging Raptor last pick. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just really get the Oath to boost the maybe board. I guess Haywire hey, Might is good with, um, grab it with Saga, right? Uh, okay, what's in this pack? Huh. Not much. Unfortunately, we didn't wield the, um, we didn't wield the blue-green Surveil Land. Uh, but I think it's still the Witch Up Teeth. Uh, Palkir is fine, but if we just pick up a dual land, then that'll make these two fetches really strong. Um, and shuffle effects are good with Sylvan. Uh, not, not a ton else I'm really excited for in this pack. Might get, like, one of these cards back on the wheel, which would be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm meant to take Heath here. Uh... Okay, following it up, well, there's the Displacerkin, but we did pass the Coveted Jewel already, so it's good with Treachery Cameo, but we don't even have a zero that sacks it tough. We didn't get the Lotus Petal back. Um, it does seem like there's someone getting cut on that combo stuff. I think it's fine to just take Memory Lapse here. Also, Steam Vests and Temple Garden. Temple Garden turns Flutter Strange to, and um, Steam Vest, I guess, doesn't do a ton. But I think it's, I mean, Memory Lapse is just such a strong card. And then maybe we can get back. Maybe we can try to wield the Temple Garden. Maybe we get the Expedition back. The pack isn't the strongest, so it might not happen. But I don't know. Memory Lapse is just very strong. The the, the two minute counters are, are all just great. Okay, so now there's a Stomping Ground. Does that do anything? I guess that doesn't do much. Um, oh, Savannah though. Oh, oh no no. I think we're just supposed to take the Spire's Quarters because the Spire's Headquarters makes both of these blue green. Also opens up a white splash if that's something we're interested in. Maybe we can play this Torsten. That could happen. Um, if we're playing uh, the Oath of Druid. Spellseeker isn't like amazing here. Uh, not a cradle deck. Once upon a time. Also like not really. Good. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with Sparrows. Uh, yeah, we have like a couple different packages. I really don't think the Moxiple is getting that at this point. but. Um, yeah, a couple of different, like, directions we could go, but we are pretty solidly in, like, this, like, Simic Ramp combo style thing. Unclear if the Brain Freeze gets there, unclear if the, uh... Unclear if the, uh... Basically any of these cards in this pile. It's kind of unclear if they get there, but... I mean, everything else... Still, we've got a, we've got a bunch of pretty powerful cards. Um, you know, we can get down, like, an early Ursa Saga and get that going. Hell Breacher is good. We got some counters, some interaction. We'd like at least one more big channel target that isn't Torsten, but we do have some picks left for that, so I'm not too worried quite yet. One interesting in this pod. Uh, no, no one I recognize. Alright, well, uh, yeah, let's just wait and see what we get in our next pack. Uh, oh. Okay, well, <laughs> there's a Tinker. Um, we did already pass Portal and Coveted Jewel, but we haven't passed Triplicate Titan, and there's a Mirror Battle Sphere in this pack. That was not a Ragavan, but we don't really have any inroads to red in terms of fixing. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so... <sighs> How greedy is it to try to wheel this Battle Sphere? I mean, uh, there are some bad cards in this pack, though. Like, I don't know, Restless Fence and Steam Can are probably getting... Also, this Noble Hierarch. But, 
No, you know what? I think I want to take Tinker. I want to try to speculate on Tinker. There's still a couple artifacts left, and we can if we can wheel this battle sphere, then Tinker will will be fine. So we do have a bunch of random artifacts. Um. Oh, there's a basalt monolith. Uh, that's unfortunate. Now I'm kind of regretting not taking cannon, but that's fine. Um. Could take my stone weak stone, but we're probably not getting the kitten back, so I don't really love that. Could just take the basalt monolith. Um, that's also not crazy. We are looking for more top end here. Fimage, I don't love because we're not gonna have many creatures. Carrot is okay, but not if we play this both of druids. And we already have a bunch of ramp that isn't that's non creatures. I think I think I just speculate on the basalt monolith. Um ooh. Okay, so uh, there's this Yawgmoth's will. There is this Yawgmoth's will, but it really is looking kind of sketchy at this point. I don't think we're really getting there on that. I think I want to take Gold Vein Hydra over Coalition Relic. It does seem like Oath of Druid isn't happening, and Gold Vein is good with Channel. You just make like a 2020 if you've got some extra mana lying around and kill our opponent in one shot. So I think that's good. We do have the Mystical for the Channel, so. I do think we want to lean into that, and it's just good to, you know, sometimes you play like an 8-9 or something off a random Basalt Monolith and be happy with that. So I think I'm going to take the gold in. Um, oh, there we go. Okay, so that is actually extremely helpful. Despite maybe not looking that impactful, this Memory Jar is actually does a lot of things for this deck. So it's something we can channel into, it's something we can tinker into, and it works with Full Breacher. Um, so I'm actually pretty happy picking up the jar. Nothing much else in this pack, but jar does go a long way. Oh, there we go. There's Triple Contain. Okay, that's that's really good. So now this Tinker got there. Uh, this Channel got there. Uh, Oath of Druids, I guess I'll have to wait and see. Uh, wait, the jury's still out on it, I think. But um, yeah, Triple Contain is huge here. Very happy to see Triplicate. Um, all right, and now I guess we're just wheeling cards. I guess we're not wheeling a ton. We've already... Kind of establish that, I suppose. Um, out of this pack, I don't think we play any of these cards. I guess we can take a Wrath for the sideboard. Maybe we can board it in against Aggro. That could be a thing. Oh, we got the Kitten back. We also got the Temple Garden back. Temple Garden would turn Fluttershin into untapped green. Um, would make the Wrath easier to splash. It's basically, what do we have? We have uh, Mana Vault, Basalt Monolith. Tamiyo, Garuk. No, we didn't get that on the kitten. Which is unfortunate. Kind of wish we'd taken the Coveted Jewel now, but... Yeah, you know, hindsight is 2020. I don't know. Temple Garden is, makes our deck a little better, so there's that. Well, uh, I kind of, kind of punished because we just picked up a <laughs> Savannah, so that wasn't really necessary, but... Hmm. So we can take the Savannah. Are we playing this? We're not playing the Oath of Druids, and I wouldn't mind a Eternal Witness. Um, actually, I guess yeah, Eternal Witness isn't even that good for us. I think I just want to take the Savannah anyway. Oh, uh, uh, that's unfortunate. I, I definitely wanted to wheel something out of this pack. I forget what. Oh, it was the... um. What was it? It was the 7-drop. The uh, Mirror Battlesphere. But uh, since we picked up the Triplicate and the Memory Jar, uh, that's not even a huge loss at this point. I guess we'll take... Uh, sure. I guess we'll take whatever we took. Um. I guess we'll take a thicket and Kusi do we want to splash the wrath. And uh I guess I'll take the Yogwill. Pillage the bog, sure. We can't play Yogwill, right? I mean we have only one source of fixing, so um alright, let's see. So yeah, I don't think this Oath of Druids got there. I don't think this Torsten got there. Um we got some. Oh, there's the close luck. Yeah. Alright, so I guess we can play Brain Freeze because of, you know, we can try to cast two Brain Freeze in our turn with Jace. We do have this Memory Jar. Dreamhouse didn't get there. Uh, seven. Take the lands out. We want to play 17 lands with this deck, I think. Uh, Mox Apple didn't get there either. So this is 25. Um, what can we cut? I mean, Brain Freeze is a little questionable. Uh, I don't think I like the one drops because of Saga, and you know, Saga and Hamar are still just fine cards. This Treachery is a little questionable. I mean, we could just cut these two. That does make Jace worse. 
But Jace is still a fine card. This Garouk, I think, is fine just as a, as a way to get some more value. Untap Saga for a second thing as well. Oh, I guess we don't want to play. They want to play Temple Garden. But the rest of these lands are good. Hmm. We could also play 16 lands. Is that greedy? There's not much reason to do that. Uh, is Basalt, is the Basalt playable? Is Tamiyo playable? So I'm not sure if I want to play Tamiyo. Uh, it just seems a little slow. We don't have, like, anything too amazing to get back. I think I'm pretty happy getting Tamiyo, and then we can cut Treachery, because I do want to keep Brain Freeze. I think we have, we have Alistair Brain Freeze with, like, Memory Jar, and set up something with Mana Vault or Jace. We'll like probably board it out against Agra, but I guess a slower deck. We could definitely set up a brain freeze, I think. Um and it's it's a good win condition with full breacher memory jar. That we can always mystical for as well. If we can maybe do something there. Um yeah, I mean this deck isn't the most exciting thing ever, but it's definitely alright. So we'll kind of see how the matches play out with it. Uh definitely not a mountain. So how this this is this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine green sources. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll ten blue sources. I think I want another blue because of cryptic command, and we also have talisman as fixing, metamorphose as semi fixing for this channel. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is going to be the deck. Um. As for our sideboard, we've definitely got some options. Uh, mostly like Tamiyo, Torsten, the White Lands for Wrath of God, uh, Treachery. Uh, I don't really see us. Oh, and Tarmogoyf, I guess, against Aggro. And then we could maybe board in Oath of Druids against Aggro, board out JVP, um, and like the Goldvein Hydra, maybe. Maybe there's something there, but um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this deck. Also, Urza Saga really helps this deck a lot. And um, having that in the end, Mystical Tutor is kind of huge. All right, so let's hop into some matches and see how the deck plays. All right, looks like we found an opponent. And we will be on the play. Now, let's see what our hand looks like. Um, hmm. That's a little sketchy. So we can Mystical for Channel. Uh, we do have our Colors of Mana. And try to set up something with Jar. I, I think I'm going to keep this. And my reasoning is going Channel Memory Jar, if we don't find anything else, going Channel Memory Jar can definitely find us if you're like find an Eldrazi or something like that. And we have a solid 1, 2, 3 into Basalt Monolith, um, into Garouk for some ramp. Hand's going to be pretty slow, so kind of hoping not to see an aggressive deck on the other side. And it looks like we aren't going to be. Getting beam down because that is an island. Also, having our colors is relevant. Uh... Ooh, okay, you know what? How close is our opponent just being dead? So we can channel Goldvein Hydra, but it's only going to be as big as. We can make it an 1818 next turn. Uh, Want to go for a chart, of course, sure. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think... Hmm, so we could put our up on this two. Abra. Hmm. Assuming we don't have a pitch counter. Put our up on it to two. If they destroy it, we get a bunch of treasures. But against Lu White, it's probably getting bounced or exiled if it dies. But then we can go for um a Garug to pressure their life total. Hmm. If this dies, then we'll be able to win pretty easily with Jar. But hmm. I'm just kind of worried about counter spells from a blue white deck. I think I think we're supposed to go for it. And maybe we don't want to channel down to one. Maybe we'll make it like a. F I guess we can. I guess we want to put them to three. Oh wait, I don't have triple green. Oh shoot. I don't have triple green for channel gold vein hydra. Whoops. 
That's not good. Um, I still think this is fine. We'll just play the Basalt and Pass, and we could set up a Jar. But yeah, this is suboptimal. The reason I don't like this, the way this plays out, is because now my opponent knows about the channel, so they're going to be suspicious. Um, yeah, and we could have maybe tinkered instead. But honestly, it's kind of looking like we might just want to go channel memory jar. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm just going to go channel. Uh, pay some life. Play memory jar. I guess we'll tap the basalt monolith. Since we can always untap it if we do need a in, and if we don't, then yeah, I guess it's better to do it this way. I don't want to play the JVP since we might need colored mana. I think I'm just going to pop the jar. Uh, okay, there we go. We found a Kozilek. So, how are we going to do this? I guess it starts with. Uh, I'm going to cast Kozilek. I'm going to keep a blue mana in because we draw into something, and we'll probably want to spend more mana this turn anyway. Um, I guess it's not great with a jar in play since we are um, not going to keep the cards. Uh, I think we probably just want to go land Haywire Might and pass. Yeah, a little punish for not playing the JVP. But this should be fine. I mean, Haywire Might seems good against them. Um, Basalt Monolith, we're just leaving tapped. Because we might want to go again with the channel with Jace. Actually, no. We probably should have tapped the Basalt. That was probably a mistake. Um, but I figured that we'd probably have a bunch of mana thanks to Garouk. Hmm. Yeah, that was probably incorrect. Anyway, if Prep doesn't do with cause like nothing matters. If they do, then at least we have a game on our hands. Uh, Prismatic Ending, the Haywire Might. That's fine. Because we don't really want to activate it. I don't think two life is worth more than a tap ball monolith. Um, and then really hoping that they don't have an answer to this cause black. If their plan is to just sack a bunch of servos to annihilate it, that's fine. That gives us some time to hook something up. No trample, but we can give it trample with Garuk eventually. I think we're probably going Garuk into Jace. Uh, Jace. and then Jace can flash back Cryptic to tap their team at some point. Could be interesting. Talisman. I'm gonna go ahead and F6 here. We don't have anything to do. Talisman is fine. Tap out of white mana, so we can't get Path or anything like that. Relic of Progenitus. Well, that's unfortunate. It's gonna make our Jace a lot worse. Uh, but that's fine. Advantage. So it looks like our opponent's at least just guy. Oh, there's a Tolarian Academy in the graveyard. Okay, I'm glad it's in the graveyard, I suppose. But yeah. I mean, not that it's surprising that they're an Academy deck, but very glad that we're not actually facing the Academy. Okay, so I'm going to attack with Kozilek. I think I'm going to go face. If I attack the Sahili, they can just sack Sahili in the four servos. This way, they're going to have to sack two permanents because presumably they want to jump instead of taking 10. Yeah, sacks the relic. That's actually nice. And then all the server. Okay, so they just, they just take 10. That's fine. That is fine by me. Yeah, I think I'd rather be on four with an untapped assault because that would make the gold vein approach lethal. Oh, I guess it's actually 12 damage, not 10. What am I talking about? Okay, and I'll go for a Garouk. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if they had Counterspell, but yeah. They don't. Uh, and we'll play a Jace. And Jace Flashback Cryptic is a real threat uh, for them, so. I think I'm interested. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely a punt to not uh, untap the Assault, because then Goldvane would be threatening lethal with the uh, Garouk mana. But hopefully we're still fine here. Hmm. <sighs> Popping a lot of mana. One ring. Okay, so that's going to keep them alive for the time being, but it doesn't save them against Annihilator, does it? What's the rules text on Annihilator? Because 
do I have to target them for them back? I don't think so. I have a peg. Um, and I have a triggered ability. Defending player sacrifice. Okay, it's defending player, so um, I think it works through the one ring protection, which is nice. And we can attack this Healy. So yeah, our combat step is not going to be wasted. Um, if we find, you know what? What we're probably gonna do is play Soul Guide, flip Jace, cast Mystical, get a counter spell. I think I kind of like that. And then next turn we'll have Trampling Garuk. Yeah. Okay, opponent's kind of going ham here with the crew and the bauble. Definitely mitigating, doing a good job mitigating this Annihilator. Go ahead and attack Sahili since I can't attack them. Uh, would be mm, a little surprised if they didn't just sack these four. Yeah, so it's not a very good sign if they work very hard to keep the Sahili around. Unfortunate that our Haywire Might is gone. You can see what I killed it now. Oh, Sack's the One Ring. No life loss. That's that's interesting. Okay, so it keeps the Sahili around, but no One Ring significantly limits their card draw. This makes me a little worried that they have like a wheel or something. But um, let's just loot with Jace. Oh. Well, we find down the left, so that's actually, that makes things easier. Uh, I probably don't want the soul guide against someone that's so eager to a relic in their deck anyway. Um, I don't think there's anything I even really care about Mystic Link for at this point, so I think I'm just gonna... Go uh, for a Talisman, take up Jace, and pass. Actually, maybe I should have kept up the Soul Guide to be able to draw into the Mystical thing off base in the future. But yeah, this is fine. So we're just gonna memory lapse whatever they do, and then untap a Salt Monolith, and then play Gold Vein and Alt Garuk. What is this? Is this like a memory jar of their own or something? I assume it's like some sort of big card draw spell because otherwise, why would they stack the Wandering and keep Tamio? And this is the only five mana below six. Is this an upheaval? Uh, would not like to see an upheaval. I guess it wouldn't be like the best upheaval of all time because they what they got like City of Potatoes. We play Talisman or something. Not great, and I can rebuild somewhat quickly, but definitely gonna lapse it. Yeah, okay, it is an upheaval, and we are just going to go ahead and memory lapse that. Not a fan, and this should leave our opponent dead on board most likely. They'd have to have something really good to get out of this. Uh, yeah, scoops it up. All right. Um, so opponents on artifacts. Does anything in our deck seem better or worse? I guess we could bring in Tamiya, so this is a kind of grindy matchup. Soul Guide did not seem. I guess I have a cruise, but Soul Guide isn't very good into cruise specifically. Brain Feast looks like it'll be pretty good here. Um, Leovold would be good, but we can't really splash it. Dream Halls is definitely not it. Uh, I think we're just good to run it back. Yeah, I think this is fine. Uh, really just hoping that they don't have a good Tolarian Academy draw here. That's what I'm most scared of. Alright. Oh, I've probably... Did I miss that they have a Zerta Companion? Because that definitely could have indicated what is going on a little better. I think this hand's pretty good, so we just have Talisman into Cryptic. And, um... We're a green source away from this Garuk. Cryptico isn't the worst. Uh, it feels like a weird head to mall, especially since we have this triple in hand as well, in case we find a channel. Make Tinker a little worse, though. I guess... Did they reveal Zerta last game? Doesn't they? Maybe they boarded into Zerta? Is that... Is that what happened? No, I, you guys know, since you can just go back and check, but... I'm kind of curious. Um, Protect the Samuels on this one. That means we can go Garuk. Uh, we might want to keep up Cryptic. I am like very nervous of their four drops since they do have stuff like One Ring. Uh, okay, well that kind of answers our question for us. It's probably just going to be Cryptic code because they're going to bounce the Talisman. 
Uh, yep. Alright, that's fine, huh? As long as we get the Teferi off the board and we keep, keep, keep Cryptic and I don't have anything too crazy. Teferi is very good, though. I mean, Ward and Unblockable makes it pretty like that the cloaked creature gets through. Um, we can also just go Garouk into Talisman into a pretty fast triplicate. We don't want to keep Cryptic. Uh, but it takes up, it's fine. Plays land, talisman. Let's put the follow up here. Uh, prismatic ending. And they get to pay the ward, sure. No, that's pretty good. I guess this means that we're definitely going for the Garouk. I mean, yeah, they they got us. Um, oh, and we get to get on a haywire might as well. That's nice. Teferi's going to make the triplicate very awkward, though. I think I'm fine playing out the Hayward Emma into removal. Having something that can attack Teferi is pretty relevant. Uh, I guess I could have made a 3-3 three -three with the Garouk, but if they can keep the Teferi around for even another turn, that just makes that so much worse. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so we would go out and put it pretty hard for that if we tried that. Uh, Relic, that's fine. I guess we're just probably like cryptic coding next turn. I don't love this spot. The Teferi really kind of messed us up. Just play draw diff, tempo. Makes everything very awkward. But it's really cooking. Like they've got a lot of colors. I assume it's just to help cast Zerda, I guess. Uh, Taiga and Godless Shrine and whatnot. Uh, I guess one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana at most. So we can go. Uh, bounce it, replay it. That's five mana. Bounce it. How about Paramites? They're amazing. I think I'd rather just bounce, play, make it three three. And the next turn, we can try to like cryptic down their team, and uh, cryptic down the team and attack the Planeswalkers. Uh, they could also bounce with three three with Jace, which I just wouldn't or Teferi, which I wouldn't mind. They're on these, I guess. And go ahead and pass. And let's see what's under the cryptic. We have like basically no. Oh, huh. I was gonna say we have like basically no creatures, but that actually counts. What card got exiled? We should check a Sylvan Library. That's fine. All right, sex the relic. That's makes sense. Uh, was it going to be a pony? I shouldn't be F6 because of the Haywire Man, I guess. Um, got a lot of like potentially scary things I could do. Academy here would be really bad because it would just be tapping for a lot of mana very fast thanks to Sealy. Uh, I guess they could probably make infinite mana pretty easily if they get down to Serta and just have a, any of the Assault Monolith. Assault Monolith or Grim Monolith. Either of the monolith, but they don't have the mana. No, they do. They have, they have double weight with the fountain and divine. I said they probably have black cards in their deck for sure. They have the taiga, so they probably have green cards or like some weird fetch land stuff. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um. Okay, it might still weak stone. Uh. It's if I had to guess, they're probably drawing two. I'll have to wait and see, though. Because they have... I mean, none of my creatures are really worth killing, and they can always tap the beast trick if they want to. Oh, they're killing the beast. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Also, this cryptic code just attacks the planeswalker anyway. Uh, I guess they could make it survive? By taking up. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But then we could go for a triplicate titan with the fairy on one. They wouldn't be able to bounce it. Uh, we might want to haywire might this might stone at some point. Because it does generate a lot of mana. But they also already have a lot of mana. Takes the tap. That's fine. Alright, what's the follow up? If they got something, they've been tanking here for a while. 
Looks like I'm just passing. Yeah, I'll wait on the Haywire Might for now, I think. The Might Stone... I think it doesn't even deny them that much mana. Ooh, Mana Vault. Okay, so what Mana Vault lets us do is also make a beast. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and attack the Teferi and see how that goes. Alright, Teferi to one. This Teferi has been really working on us. I think I'm going to play a Mana Vault and pass this triplicate. And then make a 3 3. Uh, oh, hey, why am I up? I don't think that's going to be too relevant. Um, if Mana Vault's not really ramping us into anything except for like our Eldrazi, I guess, if we drop, we can also untap it. Like, probably untapping it next turn, even. We can Blue Mana specifically with the Talisman. What's going on? Double up the Might Stone. Yeah, I mean, I was a little worried about that. With tapping out of Haywire Might, but like, I already have so much mana. What the could this be? I guess upheaval would be really bad, but like, people would be really bad anyway. Uh, yeah. Huh. I mean, at least we have this. Mana Vault? And they did have to sack their Might Stone. Oh, Sword of the Meek. That's a little worrying. So we've got to worry about Alter Sword as well. Um, huh. Let's go to the hand size here. At what do we draw? Kozilek. Yeah, I'm not sure about Kozilek here. Definitely going Sanctum into Mana Vault. Into Talisman. Into. We could go Haywire Might Exile their Talisman. We could go. Yeah, I think that's probably the play. Since if we don't, they just play the Teferi. I don't think cutting them off sword is really going to matter here. Or at least it's going to matter a lot less. I mean, it discard how many cards? We have 11 cards in hand. Well, we can discard some lands for sure. Uh, one, two, three. Actually, yeah, I probably want to. Do, do, do. So discard the Savannah in case of Wasteland at two island. And then. That would be eight cards in hand. I guess I'll discard the. I think I want to discard the triplicate since. Uh, it doesn't shuffle like graveyards. So it makes the Jace better, and if we find a. To so find a channel, then Kozlek is much better. Uh, I'll just go to tap land. That's fine. We're not going to a tap mana vault. Uh, let's see. Uh, so going for Tev next round, I think Cryptic is going to be the play. I don't know, this isn't actually that bad. The uh, the artifact mana with the uh, Might Stone didn't actually matter that much. So this is honestly fine. And having access to the Haywire Might after the people is pretty important. Alright, the Healy. Yep, that makes sense. And bobble. And cracks the bobble. Uh, what are we going to do? I do know that we're not going to pay. Ooh, Saga is very interesting. I do like that. So I think I'm just going to go Saga. Rook. On top two lands. Base and attack the Sahili for three. Garuk lets us double activate Saga, so we're gonna have a lot of beaters pretty soon. All right, what what could I want to have here? 
I mean, definitely a lot of scary things I could have. You know about the Teth? It's really kind of unfortunate that um, Moto doesn't... Oh, damn. Uh, that's fine. Moto doesn't show you, like, doesn't put the bounce cards into the revealed zones. So you kind of just have to, like, remember them. But, uh, that's fine. Arath isn't the worst here. Doesn't mean they say Healy gets to live, but... Alright, what am I gonna do here? One, two, three, four mana. Five. I think what I'm gonna wanna do is... I'm gonna... Urza Saga. Right, this works. Because I'll have one, two, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna Urza Saga and make a construct. Untap two lands. Make it seem as though um, I'm just going to beat my opponent really down really fast. This makes them want to play Tef, since they can Tef bounce one, chump one with the Sahili, but then I'll just cryptic the Tef. Probably. Probably drawing a card. Oh god, what is this? Oh, okay. Um. So, I'm going to Cryptic Command. Letting them have that just seems very sketchy. Does it? Or, or could I just... Could I just let this resolve? No, because then they can copy it with Sahili and have infinite mana, so that's definitely really bad. And so we want to counter a spell, and then we could bounce the Servo to kill the Sahili. We could draw a card. I think I... What about the Servo? I'm trying to get the Sahili out here. Yeah, this is nice. This is a huge tempo swing. If they don't have a zero here, we're going to be in great shape. And if they had a zero, they would have played it probably pre dam. I guess they, they must have run into the dam. All right, and I put it scoops it up. That's nice. So, yeah. I mean, they were pretty dead here. You know, we untap, we make a saga token. Uh, we have a bunch of mana. They're dead really quickly because of Garou Trample. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I played out pretty well. So, uh, get into match number two, I suppose. All right, I've got an opponent. And uh, let's see what our opening hand looks like. You're going to go on the draw, and opponent's really tanking on whether or not they want to be going first or not. Um. All right. Oh, uh, this hand. This hand's fine. I think we're gonna pay mana for the get probe on turn one. We can go either turn two talisman or turn two memory lapse. Uh oh, red mana means aggro, and that's that's gotta be one of our worst matchups. Okay, so. Interesting. Hey, might makes me want to pay life, but Mountain makes me want to... Yeah, I think I'm going to pay mana, because I can go Haywire might off the Talisman anyway. So let's see what they've got going on. Yep, it is it is Gruul Beast. So, I'm going to play a Lotus Cobra. And then... What's their follow-up going to be? I think I'd rather memory lapse one of their bigger creatures, so I'm gonna just play Talisman into Haywire Might. And I'm gonna hope that they whip on a land. I guess there's an argument to trying to hoping hoping that they whip on a land so I can memory lapse something and time walk them. I mean that's uh that's not a land. Oh, Jesus. Are you serious? The two cards they draw after they get uh, after they get get probed, is a fetch land for their Lotus Cobra and a mana crypt. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be uh, difficult, to say the least. Uh, I think we're going to need a channel really fast. I don't even want to cycle this mana morphos. I kill the top two cards. So we're countering probably a Death Breeders champion. No, I think I have to just Manamorphose. Make green blue hope to draw into a channel and then go like memory draw. Uh Gold Rain Hydra. 
What does that do? Very little. Uh, yeah, not much at all. Don't think exiling the mana crypt is worth it because they just already have five mana. Like it doesn't actually matter that much, and I don't wanna. I don't know, maybe I should have, but like. Mm. Yeah, that might have been a mistake, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, they just, they double spell anyway is the thing. Like, it just doesn't, doesn't matter. But I guess, what am I saving the Haywire Mate for, right? Eh, probably, probably incorrect. Anyway, um, what's going to be for? This, this is definitely a Death Scooter. A Death Scooter just kills me so fast here. Yep. Not a fan. Sorry. This, yeah, probably, I don't know, jumping with the Haywire might does seem arguably better than killing the Mana Crypt. I mean, otherwise they get to attack me for two with the Lotus Cobra. I'll take five. This channel is becoming substantially worse. I have probably only this turn to find it. Counterspell. I guess Counterspell keeps me alive. And you know what? I'll just play the Goldvein Hydra for two. I will chump the Dracosaur and make two treasures, which makes a top deck channel even better. And it means we can also try to jar into channel. Possibly. Counterspell is very good here. They're playing so far ahead with Dracosaur, though. Um, geez, Brawler as well. Yeah, I don't know. Channel might not even be enough to get us out of this at this point. It's probably going to have to be some sort of brain freeze kill, if anything. Which... Easier said than done, let me tell you. Yeah, I have to let the Railway Brawler resolve, because Death Grader is... Is oh my god, and a mox. Their deck is disgusting. Are you serious? Oh, did I forget to get in with the gold vein? Oops, it does have villain. Yeah, see, now it's I have menace or something. I can't have oh, wait, the, the hydra doesn't have flying. I forgot. Wait, do I want to die? I guess I I need to kill them this turn. So I think I'd rather it die. For the treasures? Good as well. I keep thinking that the Hydra is flying for some reason. I have no clue why. Oh, because of um, because of Shivan right? Because it, it's like it seems so similar to Shivan Devas here that I always forget that it's not flying. Yeah, I guess they're not even. Wait, can you dash this from hand? Maybe you can. Maybe that's why they didn't. But why wouldn't they? Yeah, why wouldn't they just give this double strike? I couldn't even block it. So that's a little weird to me, I guess. Uh, okay. Um. I guess I'll play the Basalt Monolith in case you can, like, Brain Freeze them. But it would involve, like, a pretty interesting sequence of events for that to happen. Yeah, not even close. Alright. Well. We definitely want Treachery. Treachery seems insane against them. Um, other than that... No, I don't really want Tarmogoyf. What's bad against them? Probably Soul Guide Lantern. Soul Guide just seems like it does very little. Maybe I want to keep Jar Hellbreacher. Uh, especially since I can tinker into Jar. Yeah. I mean, Treasury, Treasury seems insane against them, though. I'm just going to try to draw that. Try to try to break a sword, GG's. 
Uh, I'm going to keep this hand. Turn 4 Tinker is a little slow. Unfortunately, that we um, still have a cheap artifact. Possible that Boarding House Soul Guide is a little sketchy because of Tinker, but we do have a number of artifacts. Um, but, uh, turn 3 Cryptic Code, turn 4 Garouk Tinker. Pretty good. Bit of triplicate. Don't know how they beat that. And on the play, it makes it um, a lot more viable. You could also just die to a mana crypt mox start here, so we gotta kinda take it take our potential upside where we can get it. Go for the wind sub teeth. I think I'd um because of cryptic, I want um triple blue. So I'm much happier fetching a untapped land with a flow strand than a wind sub teeth. Um since we already have double greens, I think it's a savannah, so we're gonna try them and then we're gonna have island island savannah. Double green, triple blue is what we need. Really dislike that they uh are tanking on their first turn, but it looks like it's just a Manador, which is knowing their deck, it could be much worse than that. So I guess we can uh be grateful for what we've got. Love to draw like a talisman here. Uh you know what? Hey, why am I it's actually pretty good? Because that lets us tinker next turn. Unless I kill it, of course, but it's also not the absolute worst. Alright, Lotus Cobra. Better not be a fetch land. Alright, it's not. And it's only a tap land. Uh, but the fact that they specifically played it like that, I assume means that they have like another one drop. All right, I mean, yeah, this isn't like the fastest start they could possibly have, so maybe we have a chance. I could attack with a Haywire might, but the the risk of them blocking with Lotus Cobra, and keep, like, which they might do if they have like a Mana Crypt or something, is just so unbelievably high. I think we'll just go for the triplicate and be satisfied with our uh, turn two turn clock thanks to the Garouk, I guess, or the Cryptic Code, both of them turned into a turn clock. Yeah, I mean, a ghoul deck, if they kill a triplicate, the 3-2s are very beatable, but they do have to kill a 9-9 as a ghoul deck, which is definitely easier said than done. Obviously, some sort of, like, fiery confluence type deal would, would do it, destroy artifact, and then I just have, like, a bunch of... I guess 3-3s three are pretty scary with the uh, group. Yeah, even, like, a fiery confluence would be the... Oh, okay, Miss Kimbu. I mean, I guess... Wow, so... Yeah, that deck is absurd, Jesus. Um, Minsky Boo here is honestly, yeah, turn four Tinker would have been nowhere near fast enough, I guess. Um, but yeah, Minsky Boo is not actually even that bad here. Somehow, somehow I am saying this. Uh, makes it a four four. That's fine. But yeah, that deck is absurd. I mean, that Mana Crypt, Mox, Minsky Boo, like hello. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and. Kill Minsk. Or, yeah, Minsk. And then, so I could play Cryptico. I could play Garouk. I think what I want to do is just play Garouk and make a creature. There's no need to tick up because Ultimate Next Turn wouldn't kill them. Uh, I think I'd rather just start generating value. Um, if they can, like, get through my triplicate, they can't even kill the like, Garouk, though, because I would just get the three threes and. This lets me make like a big gold vein next turn or something. Uh, right to, oh my god. Okay. Uh, huh. Yikes. And fireballs to group. That's fine. Okay, so tumblebag is actually just gonna make the boo a lethal threat very, very fast. That's kind of disgusting. Um, because they can saddle it and then double the number of counters, so it'll be a. It'll be a 9-9. Actually, it'll be an 11-11 because it gets a counter from the ornery before the doubling. Mm, not sure about this. Actually, am I not sure? Or am I sure? We can play the gold vein hydra, and then if we draw a land, we can cast Kozilek. The alternative is we play Cryptic Coat. Ah, oh, this boo is just disgusting. It's so big. 
11, 11, he scrambles. So, like, the thing is, we just have to trade off, which is insane. Yeah, wow. Uh, well, I guess I can eat the tumble bag. Yeah, I think. Hmm. We could take 11, go to 10. Play the Cryptic Coat, hit the for 9. Oh, no, no. Cryptic Coat is lethal. Yeah, like, what am I talking about? Let me just play Cryptic Coat. For some reason, I thought that Cryptic Coat wasn't going to be lethal, but um, we hit them for 9 and then 12, so that's, that's 21, if I'm counting that correctly. So yeah, they basically, they need to kill the Cryptic Coat to live here, and they don't have enough mana to firebolt it because of the ward. Um, so I'm just going to uh, eat the Tumblewag, take the Boo, and take the damage from Boo, and hope that it's enough. And if it's not, then uh, we'll see. I have three mana here, I already made my land drop, so... Black man, is this a Grist? Grist killing triplicate would be really bad. Okay, it's just a hex trigger. Hex trigger does not matter. Is a okay? All right, all right, all right. So I think we win. This is quite the carve out for our opponent. Not gonna lie, but we got there. So, yep, gives a 6-6 six, six, and an 11-11. Yeah, we'll lock the tumble bag, take our beads, and that looks like lethal to me. And they can't even snuff us out or anything like that. Scoops it up. Nice. Alright, well. Uh, do we want to try to splash Rathing God? One. Let's do it up. One, two. Three, four, five, six light sources plus Metamorpho. Get the brain freeze. To the forest, got an island for a plane. So I accidentally, I think I added some extra lands. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven white sources plus Manamorphos and Garuk to help fix for double white. And gold vein hydra treasures and I guess technically treachery. Uh don't wanna cut another island. I don't think so. Alright, let's ball. Uh I mean can't really mulligan this hand. It's turn two counterspell with a Garuk. Without to drawing channel. I have a Sylvan Library on three to maybe do something. Okay, these with the mountain. Uh, I guess that's actually not that scary. Because what I'm worried about is like a two drop on turn four before I have counter spell up. Okay, but it's just a Cobra. Uh, it could be worse. Uh, so the, the hope here is that they kept their hand because it's reliant on Minskinboo, and then it gets countered here, and then they just kind of lose. The fear is that they go, like, some random Death Greatest Champion or whatever type card that I have to counter because it's too much pressure, and then they untap and play a Drakosaur, and I'm just dead. Okay, that's that's actually kind of fine. This implies some big fatty being cast. 
which I get to counterspell, which I do like. Uh, yeah, no thanks. No thank you. And now we just hope they don't have a Dracosaur, a Minskin Boo, etc. Any of these big follow-ups. It's kind of gross, as they could have... If they had, like, a Minskin Boo hand, they could have attacked with the Gold Span and then played it with their 4 mana. Okay, so... I guess we're just going to go for a Sylvan Library. Taking a turn off on the draw to Sylvan is really not where I would like to be, but... Yeah, our channel is becoming... Swiftly... Swiftly not that effective. Oh dear, yeah, well, we're taking 7 here, 9, going to 8. Yeah, I mean, like... Wait. I can even do the math, but if this isn't enough, then we're... No, yeah, we... we... Technically live. We technically live because of the life gain from Haywire Might. Oh shoot, we have triplicate in hand. Oh my god. Yeah, we're we're well, we just have, uh we can jar into nothing. We can Yeah. That's gonna be GG. Okay, yeah, if we if we had could have gotten the triplicate, then we could have uh They were attacking for they would they could have hit us for four on board, and we would have been dead to like a lot of things. But if not, then we were maybe okay. But yeah, trouble getting hand uh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, hopefully we can pull off a two uh, two one. But yeah, they uh they got us pretty good. I mean their deck was just unbelievable. Like they just they had all of the dorks, uh, but they also had two pieces of power and Minskin Boo and this kind of like really aggressive Gruul deck is going to be a very difficult matchup for us. All right, we get to play this time and. Huh. I mean, I don't think this is keepable, really, but, uh, kind of funny. It almost is. Almost is. Uh, huh. Well, you know what? I'll keep this. Bottom the Sylvan. Any artifact lets us tinker. Any green source lets us Garouk. You'll do the turn. Damn. I don't know, it's... It's a hand that's really reliant on drawing some things, but... Okay. That's, like, quite possibly the worst draw in our deck. I guess we do have a couple of them, though. Uh, and... There we go, there's a the Flood Strand. This does get untapped green, but... We don't have any uses for that green just yet, so I'm just gonna pass back. Alright, um, okay, so we could get a Triumph here, we could get the Savannah. I kind of want to get the Savannah, just because I don't... I would rather draw Triumph than Savannah, so I can cycle Triumph. No. No, I want to get Sparrows, because we might need double green at some point for channel. And we are, like, somewhat mana-hungry of a deck. Well, I'm going to go for a Manamorphose. I assume this isn't getting countered, but the Garouk is, but we're just doing... Okay. I guess that's fine. Better that getting reprieved than the Tinker. Yeah, I mean, that's not that worse. It, it time walks us, but our opponent wasn't really doing much anyway. And I'd rather, much rather have the Manamorphose get reprieved, which is a spell we can recast. So it's a little weird that my opponent would even uh, reprieve there, but I guess the reasoning is they really need to hit their land drop. Alright, so that's a time lock. The opponent takes our extra turn. And. Passes. Well, I wonder if they have a counter spell up. Ooh, it is a mystery. There's a botanical sanctum. And I guess we're not even casting it or playing it because 
No. Oh my god. Oh. I meant to float mana. So that I wouldn't use double green. No. Oh my god, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, I don't feel like tinkering into a counterspell. Just doesn't seem like a fun way to spend my time. I guess we can next time we can double spell. We can go Garuk plus Tinker, try to overwhelm their counter spells. If they've got like a cryptic or whatever, then we can cast two relevant spells in a turn and get one of them through. Or uh, or it was fine. There's a land. Alright, well they've stopped missing their land drops at least. Yes, thing at least is not really the reverse at least. It's unfortunate. Oh my god, mana drain. Uh yeah. Well, I'm gonna get a triplicate and just kinda hope that it's enough. Not much else I can do, uh, but it's I, I fear it's going to be much too slow with them having the ability to also gain life off Uro and play a massive, like, 6-drop. And they can also just, like, bounce up Mystic Confluence or Exile it or... Yeah, bounce with Teferi. Okay, it's looking kind of over. It's not looking good for us at all. Oh my god, Chromo Sea Trek 2. So, infinite cards in hand. Yeah, I'm just gonna skip it up. I don't really see us coming back from this, especially since we know they were missing land drops, so their hand is all gas. Uh, okay, so Bant Control with Time Walk. I think we just sideboard in some hopes and prayers. I don't really see much else we can do. Yeah. My hand did not play out the best. It does seem like another matchup where we could definitely just like fair brain freeze them at least. And it's another matchup where drawing a Hullbreach would be very good. If we could ever do that. Our deck is capable of some busted starts. We can turn to channel, we can turn to tinker, we can do all these things. Um, but I guess a turn to southern library is going to we'll have to settle for that. Uh, I would not be a huge fan of keeping this hand on the draw, but on the play, we're pretty likely to resolve a Sylvan. And then in this matchup thing, we just, like, draw a bunch of cards. And I'm I'm pretty likely to just pay 8, honestly. Oh, okay, Fetchland actually changes that. That's actually a great draw, despite it being a land. I guess it's one of the better draws, despite being a land. Whatever lands to draw. Because we could just grab whatever non-land off the top, and then shuffle away all the lands. That saves his life. Oh, there's a channel. Well, that makes the Sylvan worse, I guess. Uh, Git Probe. Okay, I'll pay for life for the Git Probe. And... Put that on top. Shuffle it away. Alright, grab the Savannah, because I... I want to pay life for the Git Pro. And now we're just keeping up memory lapse. Knowing their hand in this kind of matchup is really, really good. Helps us play around counter spells and know when to keep up our own counter spells. They reprieve the Gitaxian Pro, which is fine. It does seem like they're missing land drops, but memory lapsing a reprieve is just kind of bad. Like, imagine they just go Taff bounce to Sylvan after I do that. That would not be good at all. And I don't want I really don't want to pay life with this Git Probe. Um yeah, props are fine. I'll just counter over the creature they play. Really not worried about that. It doesn't seem like they have wheels. Probably just seems like a MVP in this matchup. Alright, let's do a hit with Sylvan. Uh JVP, JVP's good. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We even have memory lapse back up. I'm a huge fan. That is exactly what we needed. All right, let's go. Channel. Oh, 
One, two, three. I don't want to keep up two mana here with my lands. So I can counter something. So I'm just going to go to five and cast a cheeky Kozilek. Yes, sir. Sure. Ancestral is fine. Memory Lapsing Ancestral doesn't actually do anything. Let's so I can just recast it. Attack them one mana. Not that I would probably... Oh my god. Um... Yeah, I guess I'm memory lapsing that. That's unfortunate. I mean, it's fine we memory lapse it. Like, no big deal, but... It would have been nice to hold up memory lapse for something else, because I am pretty worried about what they could have. I still don't think it's worth attacking and probing. Uh, this hand... We drew some good cards, though. I mean... We can we can go mana vault into Tinker after this as well. Like that's pretty good. Tinker get a triplicate. Uh yep, there's a Teferi, of course. Of course. There goes the Kozlek, and it is not returning for quite some time. Ooh, Goldman Hydra is a nice one. Uh oh, that's definitely first one I Hmm. So let's think about this, right? I think what I want to do is just play Goldvein and attack the Teferi. Three, four, five, six. Do I want to play a Mana Vault so I can play Kuzlek next turn? I don't want to go to one here. Okay. Um. Yeah, honestly, I don't even care about the Goldvein Hydra being that big. I think I'm just going to... Um, I could play it for one, so that's two mana. So then I would have three mana, so I could get probe and play Jace. Or I could mana vault and play Jace. Or I could cryptic code. That doesn't seem good though. I kind of want to. Hmm, I guess Jace doesn't do a ton. Yeah, I think I'll just. Yeah, actually, what if I don't even bother playing Jace? What if I just get probe them? I have a bright idea of what's going on. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, they have a time walk in hand. And a snapcaster for the time walk. And they can Mystic Confluence, whatever fatty I get down. Uh, and so yeah, here's our talisman. And then... Go for a mana vault. And a Goldman Hydra. Wow, their hand is actually disgusting. They can go Oko Time Walk. Oh, I'm I'm probably just dead actually. Not that I could do much about it, but they could just go Oko Time Walk. Oh, I forgot they can do that. Yeah. What do they pitch? Probably Uro. Yeah, I guess doing it for X equals one was optimal then, but maybe I should have gotten down the cryptic coat. Uh yeah, we're pretty cooked. Yeah. They pitched the Uro. <sighs> no, actually we're just dead, aren't we? Cause they can go time lock, Oko. Snapcaster time lock? Yeah, it actually just didn't matter in the slightest, because they could also Mystic Confluence on the last turn to kill us. So, getting down the Cryptic Coat, like... No, I guess Cryptic Coat... Well, hold on. Cryptic Coat blocks, but then they just play Snapcaster time lock. Yeah. Okay, well, that was brutal. Alright, yeah, that's gonna do it. Unfortunately, we ended with a 1-2, but... I don't know, this deck was okay. Not not the most exciting. Kind of whiffed on a lot of the payoffs that we were looking for, but it had some potential for Blessed Hearts and didn't really find that too often. I mean, that game we had a nice, like, channel, Kozilek, like but just wasn't quite enough. That's that's kind of the difference. Is channel Emrakul, like, basically always wins the game. 
channel, Kosalek is a good play. But yeah, a little disappointing, but you know, this deck was like a 2 1 1 2 deck anyway. Uh, so yeah, that's going to do it for the video. I will see you in the next one. Bye.